Hello, I'm Odin, and today I'm gonna make a sawed-off shotgun. The double-barrel sawed-off shotgun is an effective weapon used in many movies and video games. I'm gonna start with the barrels. Three-quarter inch Schedule 40 PVC pipe is very close to the bore of a 12-gauge shotgun. So I cut my pipe down to just over 15 inches and tape the ends together so that they'll stay flat. I cut some small strips of 8th inch styrene plastic and I use PVC pipe cement to glue one strip onto what will be the bottom of the barrels and then I can carefully make a T-shape that'll glue onto the top. Now you can just glue the two pipes together directly, but adding the strips will make that bond much stronger. It doesn't take long for the PVC cement to set and I use the bandsaw to trim both ends of the barrel so all the pieces are flush. Before I cut any foam, I look at a reference photo and draw out the profile so it can fit the barrel. And I'm glad I did so, because I didn't like the grip. So I cut that off, I drew a better one, and then I taped it back on. Happy with my new pattern, I cut three pieces of foam that'll easily fit and glued them together. Now three layers of foam is gonna be great for the thickness of the stock. So I trace my pattern and cut it out on a bandsaw. I've got a 120 grit belt sander that I'm gonna to use to remove the texture off the one side of the stock. And once it's all smooth, I can start rounding off the front end. Then I draw a basic grip design on the grip and I sand that to shape too. I lay the stock on its side so the belt will sand a little height difference to show where the wood should be and where the steel body is supposed to be. Now, keep a grip of the foam when you're sanding like this or you're gonna end up walking around the shop a lot. To get a better shape, I thought I would try some grinding stones that are made for air tools. Now they fit in my drill just fine, and they do the trick, but a Dremel or some other rotary tool spins faster and is better for a job like this. To make the rounded ends on the barrels, I thought about just sanding down some foam, but one of those super bouncy balls is the same size as the PVC pipe, so I can cut that in half with a razor knife and super glue it on later. The air tool set came with a spherical stone and it is almost the right size for the super bouncy ball end of the barrel. So I make a place in the stock for the balls to fit. Once I glue the super bouncy balls onto the pipe, I notice that the shape kind of resembled the warp nacelle from the Enterprise from the original Star Trek. And I needed to play with that for a minute before I painted it all black. <laughs> Typically, I put a solid core in the grips of my foam guns so they're not floppy. I thought I'd try to do it without it this time, but I'm afraid it's gonna feel too wobbly. The easiest fix I could think of was to drill a hole and glue in a piece of wooden dowel. Now it did a good job, so I added another coming from the other side. It's still not perfect, but is much better than without. Oh, that's gonna be a lot better. I used a Dremel to carve a piece of styrene into a barrel release lever and make a slot for it in the foam stock. I cut a half inch strip of styrene plastic for the trigger guard and I use a heat gun to bend it into the shape that I want. It took a couple of tries to get the shape that I like, and I left some extra plastic on the ends to glue it into the stock and hold it in place. I need a couple of triggers, and I shape them from styrene plastic as well. I use the Dremel to make slots for all the plastic parts to glue into the foam stock, and I happen to hit one of the wooden dowels inside the grip, so I ground the trigger guard to fit around it. I etch some small panel lines into the steel part of the body, and then use a countersinking bit to make some holes where I can add screws later. I glue a piece of foam onto the butt of the grip. Now a sawed off shotgun probably doesn't have a butt plate, but I needed to hide the end of the wooden dowel. And if I had planned for a solid core from the very beginning, I wouldn't need this step. So I tried to use the heat gun to go ahead and heat seal the foam a little bit, remove some of the scuff marks from sanding, but now I can take it outside and paint it. The foam part, I'm gonna paint with plastic dip. Plastic dip is a vinylized rubber coating that'll stick really well to the foam and give it a good decent skin. But plastic dip does not stick to PVC or to styrene. It'll actually just rub off. So these parts, I'm gonna spray paint with the regular spray paint. But first I'm gonna hit plastic dip on the super balls just in case regular spray paint doesn't want to dry there. After all the parts are blacked, I try to lightly dust the metal pieces with silver spray paint. To do this, I hold the can a little further away and use short bursts from the spray can. Now this is a little tricky to do and it's very difficult to do with any wind. So I needed to dust it again with black paint. I had taped off the foam where I wanted to use contact cement so I could glue clean foam to the barrels. Cheap brown craft paint will do to paint the wooden areas and I try not to make it a solid color 
because I want it to be a little blotchy with some black showing through. And I add water at different times to thin the paint a little. When the paint drips onto the metal areas, just wipe it off with a wet paper towel. I glue the barrels on with contact adhesive, but be careful when using cement on painted parts because it works just like a paint thinner and it'll remove spray paint from the PVC pipe. So put it only where you need it or you're gonna have to repaint something. I have two pairs of screws that I glue into the sides for just that little extra detail. I sealed the whole gun with a layer of matte spray paint so I could put on a second layer of black wash and the water wouldn't rub off any of the brown paint. And this was really helpful when I started painting with a sponge. To speed up drying times, you can use a fan to blow air over the wet paint. You don't need to have heat to dry the paint, just moving air is gonna work fine. And this idea works well for latex rubber too and is really needed when the temperatures are low in the winter. If you decide to make a shotgun, remember that this is a real world weapon and sawed off shotguns are illegal in most states. So if you just walk down the street with one of these, you will probably get into a lot of trouble from the police. And it's illegal in California to hold a fake gun in a threatening manner against someone who doesn't know it's fake. The police will charge you as if the gun is real because to the victim, it was real. Now you may need to add a blaze orange tip onto the barrel to show that this is a fake gun. Just use poster paint or orange masking tape on the ends, and then you could clean it off to take good pictures. And if you have to have orange tips while at a con, just make a removable plug so you can pull it off when somebody wants to get a picture of you. Now there's lots of different ways that you can make a sawed off shotgun, but this is how Odin makes. I now have a Patreon page, which will give you the chance to win props that are made right here in Odin Makes. And it's the only place where I'll talk about my upcoming builds. If you like the video or have ideas or something for me to make, please leave them in the comments below. And if you make any of these projects, you can send me a picture. A plane. <laughs>